Himari Kino lies in bed, ignoring her morning alarm. However, her cat Maruta licks her awake. She's startled at the idea she might be late for school, but sighs with relief, knowing she'd woken up just on time. Although, she's still a little tired. She gets dressed for her first day of school, waving goodbye to her cat. Arriving at the grand-looking school, she stares in amazement. It's so big and fancy. Her friend Miki arrives to meet her. Himari is so happy that they've been going to the same school together since elementary, and they've been in the same class now for four years straight. Miki mentions the opening ceremony has a music band performance, and her sister is playing in it, so she wants Himari to sit in the front row with her. They go backstage where the band is mentally preparing themselves. However, their stand-in singer slash guitarist, Yori Asanagi, is incredibly nervous. She's unsure of what to do. It's as if her heart is pounding out of her chest. She's so anxious, she begins to regret agreeing to substitute, singing on her own. She's normally fine, but the thought of being in front of a crowd leaves her hands trembling. The stage curtains open, and as Yori begins to sing, Himari stares as if her mind has been taken away. Himari feels like she can hear the singer's voice echoing in her head. With Yori's image being the apple of her eye, Himari thinks she's so cool. When the performance finishes with the crowd applauding, Miki has to bring Himari back to Earth. She's excited to ask Himari what she thought of her sister's bass guitar performance. But as we know it, Himari was lost, only locked on to the singer. She claims she fell in love at first sight. The singer, who was so cool. The singer, who was so pretty. Himari kept going on about her, even after school. We then turn to the band doing a cheers to their performance. Miki's sister, Aki, even teases Yori saying her singing was the bomb. She offers Yori a place as a full-fledged band member, despite how insanely nervous she was. The drummer, Mari, wonders how Aki even convinced Yori to sub in, to which Aki ecstatically shows off the cute kitty pouch she bribed Yori with. However, Yori defends herself, saying it's a limited edition, so she had to have it. Mari then offers even rarer cat merch for Yori's singing talent, showing off her rich girl powers. Kaori, their pianist heard that Yori does composition, so now they want her to write them a love song. This gets Yori super nervous. She can't write love songs because she's never even fallen in love. So Mari commands her to go fall for someone. Walking on her way out, Yori draws a blank, just thinking about how to write a love song. She's never fallen in love or had anyone fall for her, until Himari screams complimenting Yori on her performance. This makes Yori nervous, modestly saying she made a bunch of mistakes and her singing isn't even that great. But to Himari, that's not true at all. She just plainly says to Yori that this made her fall in love at first sight. Oh my gosh, so bold. Yori looks at Himari's bright smile, wondering if she heard her right. She just got confessed to, and even better, she finds Himari adorable, especially that smile of hers. With Himari running off in excitement, Yori watches, stunned at how love has found her. The next day, her bandmates are shocked to hear a first year fell in love with her. Although, Mari wasn't expecting this to be the emergency Yori was talking about in their group text. Aki asks how Yori feels about her little suitor. This makes Yori blush, and she meekly admits she might be in love with Himari. But now, they need Yori to give a reply. Like, I love you too or let's go out. All sorts of things that Yori finds super embarrassing. We move to lunchtime with Himari and Miki, where of course, the former can't stop thinking about Yori. Himari jolts in excitement, explaining how she met the vocalist girl by the shoe cubbies yesterday. She comments on how Yori is super cool and super tall, although it might be that Himari is just short. Luckily for her, Miki got all the details on Yori from her older sister. Yori is in class 3A, not in any clubs, born on November 26th, and blood type A. Why does that matter? Himari is shocked that Yori isn't in any clubs, considering Miki's sister Aki is at least in the light music club. Well, turns out they took in Yori because the band's original guitar vocalist quit at the last minute. Miki then adds that Yori likes to sing on the roof after school, so Himari's gotta be there. After school, Yori sits exhausted after reading from Aki that the band is expecting a full report on her love prospects. That girl is all Yori could think about all day. Wondering if she told Himari she loved her too, would she get to see that smile again? 
she pulls out her guitar to try to clear her mind and hopefully write a love song, all while Himari heads to the roof, yearning to hear more and more of that beautiful voice. Yori loves singing to herself. She doesn't sing to be heard. She just likes singing. On her own, she can sing however she wants. But for Himari, she might reconsider. Then, at Himari shrieking from finding her, Yori gets startled. Yori wonders how Himari found her here, but that doesn't matter. She was hoping to see Himari again. Even through her nerves, Yori confesses she fell in love at first sight too. There, she said it. She was scared at first, but this is good. The feeling's mutual, so Himari is sure to be thrilled. What? You mean you fell in love with singing at first sight and that's why you joined the band, Yori? Himari was excited that they're both love at first sight buddies because she'd love to join a band if she was good at singing too. All this left Yori somewhat agape. She realized now that Himari wasn't in love with her. She was truly embarrassed to find out Himari is just a huge fan of the music. She's flustered out of her mind that she misread the situation so badly. However, as Himari introduces herself, Yori is lost, thinking, God, that smile is cute. Yori then quickly composes herself, asking if Himari just came all the way up here to hear her sing, to which Himari just as quickly replies, she'd come up here every day to listen. Yori is taken aback hearing this, but no, no, no. She realizes Himari doesn't mean that in a romantic way. She's fine with it though, telling Himari she's gonna make her fall even harder for her. The next day at school, Himari is so excited to share yesterday's rooftop experience, but is stunned to be suddenly greeted by Yori. Himari is super excited, and although Yori is definitely crushing, she tries to play off the interaction super cool, saying she'll see Himari on the rooftop later. Yori spills the details to Aki, but she already knew Himari liked her as a fan since her sister told her. Now Yori feels as if she can't come on too strong, but wants Himari to also see her as someone cool she can rely on. However, her bandmates continue to relentlessly tease her, with Mari offering a luxury cruise liner for the two when Yori finally asks Himari out. After school, Yori walks up the steps, just thinking about how seeing Himari will put her on cloud 9, but she wasn't expecting to see Himari waiting for her. Himari had apparently already been there for 20 minutes, as she bolted to the roof right after class was over. She wanted to see Yori as soon as possible. All this sweetness is too much for Yori, however, because she can barely handle it. But instead of a musical session, it actually became a Himari yapping session. She got a little carried away talking about her day, but Yori didn't mind at all. And seeing Yori smile, Himari became speechless because it was so pretty. Even though it was late now, she pleads with Yori to sing just one song for her. This made Yori flustered, but she did it anyway all while reflecting on how this all came about through a misunderstanding. As Himari continued to watch the pleasant performance, Yori just kept thinking her feelings weren't going away anytime soon. Afterwards, Yori was able to breathe a sigh of relief that she finished. She's certain with her nerves, she must have missed a few notes here and there, going a little off tune. However, Himari claimed the performance as beautiful. Yori looked so cool, it took her breath away. She knows she asked for one song, but now she wants another. Yori needs Himari to stop complimenting her, or else she's gonna break from the sweetness. But Himari doesn't want to. She loves Yori singing so much. Himari then asks if Yori is going to keep singing in the band, but learns Yori doesn't want to. She doesn't like singing in public, although she did promise to write a love song for them, something that Himari is excited to hear. Reflexively, Yori pats Himari's head saying, in that case, She'll reconsider playing in the band, leaving Himari completely flushed. But she didn't mind that Yori did that. Himari then goes to grab her backpack so they can walk home together. And while she's away, Yori stares at the hand she used to pat, wondering what she's even doing. And I'm wondering what you're even doing if you haven't liked this video and subscribed to my channel. Come on, I've got so many fun shoujo stories to share with you. And sometimes it's not shoujo, but hey, I promise it's always fun. So hit that subscribe and give me a like. The next day at school, it's raining hard. The rain makes Himari feel gross and exhausted. But even worse now, she wonders what she's going to do after school. Himari sneaks over to classroom 3A, but she can't find Yuri. Oh man, if she doesn't find her now, she might not see her after school either. Aki spots her and then flags Yuri, who is surprised to see her crush. Himari explains with the rain today, 
she wasn't sure about their after-school plans. So Yori invites her to classroom 3A anytime it's raining. Aki then begins the teasing saying, Look at you two, chumming it up come rain or shine. Himari then responds earnestly that seeing Yori is the highlight of her day, definitely making Yori's heart explode. After Himari says her goodbyes to head back to class, Aki tells Yori it's clear Himari is down bad for her. She thinks Yori's read on the situation initially was a lot closer than she thinks now, but the embarrassed Yori thinks there's no way. After school, Himari arrives at Yori's classroom, nervous just like that day she was entering the rooftop. Finding Yori's desk, she notices Yori's cat-themed pencil case, learning Yori absolutely adores cats. So, Himari brings up her cat at home, showing Yori her cute cat pictures, and seeing a picture of Himari with her cat, Yori says, cute, out loud. But she's not talking about the cat if you catch what I mean. <laughs> the two continue talking about different types of cats, which I have no idea about. I'm more of a dog guy. But anyway, all Yori can think about is how talking with Himari makes time fly. She wonders if Himari always looks this happy, or if it's just when they're together. Himari then asks Yori if she has any plans this Sunday, and invites Yori to a cat goods pop-up shop by the train station. The invitation catches Yori off guard, knowing this would be their first time hanging on a day off from school, but she agrees to it. That night, Yori laid in bed just thinking about the plan she made with Himari. She's going back and forth in her head in disbelief at how this is happening, worried she's misinterpreting things again. She then suddenly gets a text from Himari that reads, I hope you're having a nice evening. I can't wait for our date on Sunday. The words date make Yori flip over on her pillow. Wait, hold on. Is Himari actually in love with her? Yori tries to figure out how she should reply to the message. And with Himari seeing a simple, looking forward to it, she thinks Yori is so cool. Later, Yori attempts to write the love song for the band until she suddenly gets a call from Aki. Aki teases Yori about her crush as per usual and invites Yori to go shopping for new clothes with her. But Yori can't because of her date with Himari and she drops Aki's call right after. Meeting at the station, Yori is at a loss for words over Himari's cute outfit, and Himari gushes just as much back at her. As they walk together, Yori thinks about how happy she is, and if they really started dating, she'd get to enjoy moments like these all the time. Himari's stomach starts rumbling, so it's time to eat. The two enjoy pasta, Himari's favorite kind of food. She then offers Yori some of her dish, and now seeing Himari wants to feed her makes Yori blush. Hold on. Be strong, Yori. What would a cool, reliable upperclassman do in this situation? Yori takes a bite, calmly saying, It's delicious, but we can clearly see her face is red. Afterwards, the two arrive at Kitty Fest, and it seems to be swarmed with people. Looking around only for a second, Yori realizes she already lost Himari. Himari went to the back because she's not used to crowds yet, so Yori offers her hand. That way, they don't get split up. With Yori taking the lead, they get a basket full of cat-themed merchandise. Himari picks out a set of matching cat-themed phone straps, something the two could share together, making Yori lose it, like we'd expect. Taking it from Himari's hand, Himari gets startled because she was going to pay for them. However, Yori wants to get it for her as a present. Sitting on a bench, the two enjoy their matching phone straps. With joy exuding from Himari, Yori begins to understand why people get so fired up picking out presents for the people they love. The two then enjoy other activities in the area, such as getting boba, clothes shopping, checking out cute cats, and checking out a music shop. Himari is surprised to learn Yori doesn't actually come to music shops often, and she doesn't actually know much about guitars. But her dad is really into them. Yo, this is crazy that Yori's dad is the first mention of a guy existing in this show. But anyways, Yori's dad already knew she could sing, so he was the one who suggested she learn to play the guitar next. Himari gets lost looking at the guitars, and wonders if this blue one was the same kind Yori used at the opening ceremony. We learn it's not quite the same model, but she does indeed own a blue guitar. Looking at the guitar takes Himari back to that day. She knows Yori said she was done with the band, but she really wants to see Yori play with them again. Yori would rather continue her solo performances on the rooftop, and Himari thinks of them as special since it's just the two of them. When they're alone, Yori's voice is pretty and gentle, 
However, Himari thinks of Yori's band performance as snazzy and cool. She knows it's a selfish desire, but she wants both sides of Yori. Yori is taken aback by this, feeling it's weird, but somehow, Himari's request makes her want to give it another shot. Uh-huh, yeah. If someone I liked asked me to do something, I might just do it. I know what it is. While the two head out for the evening, Yori gets a little sad because she wanted to spend more time with Himari. She wants to hold hands with Himari and stare at her forever. She wants Himari to look back at her. At the station, Himari exclaims she had a blast today. Yori replies, yeah, me too, because, um, I really like you. So naturally, Himari replies, yeah, I love you too, Yori, but more in a friendly way. Yori then says, imagine how happy she'd be if they were actually dating. And friendly like once again, Himari tells Yori being her girlfriend would be great since they could go on rooftop dates every day, which causes Yori's fist to tighten. With Himari's train coming, she's got to head out. But Yori suddenly stops her to tell Himari she's serious about going out with her. Yori then apologizes for being so abrupt, but tells Himari to think about it as she walks away, and Himari shudders while holding her grabbed arm. Elsewhere, the bandmates speculate on how Yori's date is going. Mari questions if love at first sight even really exists, to which Aki seriously mentions it does. Thinking of her first time meeting Yori on the rooftop, having her breath taken away. Ooh, things are getting spicy. In the bath, Himari thinks about what Yori had said, and now realizes all those other things Yori had said on the rooftop were heartfelt feelings. But Himari has no idea what to do about this. Himari's love is certainly different from what Yori feels. She doesn't even know what that kind of love is. Oh my gosh. We got Yori's confession. We got a love triangle from Aki. There's so much spiciness in this anime. Find out what happens next week by subscribing to my channel. Also, watch this next video. It's me, Comfy T. I'll see you all in the next one.